Round 14 of the Yarla Elite Series would take place at the Vancouver Speed Park in Canada. The Smash Beer Polo Award would go to Vinny Enzo in car number 22. This track originally had only one layout, a 4 mile configuration for touring cars. However, today's race would take place on a brand new layout, a uh, shorter 3.2 mile course for stock cars. Turn 4, which rejoins the main course, would be the site of the first incident of the day. Cody Richards in the 53 runs the turn wide, then gets into the 14 of Bixby Foot spinning him out into the grass. Foot gets his car going again, and promptly runs into the wall. Car number 14 would be the first car to go out of the race. The second part of this incident would involve Leslie Riggs in the 50, watch Marcus Leonard in the 78, he gets turned by Jared Anderson into the 50, spinning her out, and while the 50 tries to get going, uh, Anderson scoops her onto her roof. Leslie Riggs was none too happy with Jared Anderson about this, as her radio communication suggested. Back up front, Mario Franchetti in the 4 gets a run on Enzo coming up the hill. And as they come into the S's, you're going to see Enzo run the turn wide. He slides along the wall, handing, handing the lead to Franchetti. You're going to see Hinata Hugo go off the track and into the, into the wall. A bit further back, Shane Lake in the 12 will be battling with Alex Graff. Graff runs the turn wide, slides along the wall. They go three wide with Alex Carson, a very tight fit to this section of the course. The 8 and the 12 get together and go into the wall. Laura Cyrus goes spinning, and so do Leigh Gruel and Brenda Riggs. There you see Dallas Dupree in the 43. He gets a little piece of this. Chris Johans got a little bit of damage as well. On lap 2, Liz Hebert and Harry Nola are going to get into a wreck without actually touching each other. Nola in the 09 runs the turn wide and hits the wall, spinning himself out. Hebert reacts to this and runs off the course. The second incident of this lap would involve CJ Dejao in the 37, who seems to know his way around these road courses. After all, he won at Watkins Glen. He seems to be following Scott Hamilton's line, but he runs the turn wide and spins himself out, going across the track almost into Anthony Griffith in, Griffith in the 06. He doesn't lose too many positions, but track position is very crucial at these road courses. There would be another incident behind Dejao. Andy Pearson in the 2 runs into the wall, then Edgy Huga turns the 71 of Packer Carroll into the 2, spinning both cars out. You saw a train of about 5 cars go by them. Wrecking your girlfriend's mother is probably not very courteous, but that's exactly what Chris Johans does on lap 3. He hooks and turns the 67 of Brenda Riggs, launching her into the 42 car of Laura Cyrus, and the 67 ends up propped up on the wall. Brenda Riggs is, of course, the mother of Allie Riggs, who Johans is currently dating. Because of that, tensions have been pretty high between Johans and the elder Riggs, and this obviously is not going to make things any better. A bit further up, Marcus Leonard and Tristan Roberts are going to get together, sending both cars into the wall! Marcus Leonard hits the wall pretty hard. Car number 70, 78 will go out of the race. Back up front, Mario Franchetti continues to hold a pretty nice lead until he runs the final corner a bit wide and starts sliding along the wall. You're going to see the rest of the leaders catch right up to the four and blast by him. Uh, Nam Namimura leading them, bringing Hinata Hugo with her. Cars 13 and 39 will take first and second respectively. Anthony Griffith is going to do what everyone else has been doing best so far, running the turn wide, coming up the hill, and spinning his car off the track. Team Thunder is not doing very well this season, despite getting both of its cars up in the top 10 at the end of last season. Anthony Griffith is pretty far back in the points, and Bob Steffens is way outside the top 30. Hinata Hyuga has been on Namimura's back bumper, eager to make a move. She finally looks to do that, but she runs the turn wide, slides along the wall, and she's going to spin her car out. She goes back across the track and into the wall again. She loses a bunch of spots. This would hand second place to Lance Andrews in the 72. Paul Sweeney was originally scheduled to run this car, as Andrews was only supposed to run the American races. However, Sweeney fell ill. Uh, and luckily for that team, Andrews agreed to drive this car for this one race. Andrews has shown that he's gotten used to these early Elite Series cars, as he almost won Pocono last weekend, and ran up front at Buffalo a few weeks ago. Here is Leslie Riggs, back out on the track after flipping her car over on lap 1. The 50 team lost about 3 laps in the pits, try, uh, trying to fix the roof of that car. 
the rules re require that the roof flaps be functional at all times. It's kind of odd that this rule is in effect at these slower courses, where you're not going fast enough to worry about blowing over. Back up front, Lance Andrews is going to get a pretty good run on Amimura coming into the final corner. He works his way to the right side of the 13 and would have probably made the pass anyway, even if Namimura didn't start sliding along the wall. Mario Franchetti also gets by the 13 for the second spot. Namimura is having a very good run regardless. Another guy having a good run is Scott Hamilton in the 74, uh, getting by Vinienzo for the fourth spot at the moment. Hamilton led the first third of the event at Leipzig, arguably one of the biggest disasters in Arla history. Unfortunately, Hamilton got wrecked by a lapped car in that race and never really got to show what he had. However, he's looking to make up for that today with a top 5 run so far. Mario Franchetti has been trying to run down Lance Andrews in the, in the 72, but it looks like he's trying a bit too hard as he, say it with me, runs the turn wide and spins his car out. This is quite the heartbreak for the Italian, whose last win came at Bristol in 2007. Anthony Griffith is going to get into another incident. He gets into the wall trying to run down Michael White and goes off the course once again. Back up front, Lance Andrews pulls out to a pretty nice lead over Nami Moore in 13. The racing has settled down at the front of the pack uh, as the leaders get strung out. Your teammate is probably one of the best people you can learn from and no doubt Bob Steffens picked this little trick up from Anthony Griffith. Steffens gets into the wall and spins himself out while battling with Liz Hebert, and you just saw Anthony Griffith go by. I suspect that Steffens was ordered to spin his car out, so his teammate Griffith would not look so foolish for wrecking twice. Lance Andrews continues to hold a commanding lead over Nami Mura, but the top two have completely checked out from the rest of the field. You can't even see anyone else, well, except for Harry Nola, who uh, Andrews just lapped. Liz Hebert is going to get into another incident. She runs a bit wide, she's going to hit the wall, and then gets into Anthony Griffith. She drives on a pretty steep embankment, and then something breaks on her car when she gets back onto the track. Here comes Bob Steffens, he runs into the 31, completely ignoring the fact that he could have driven around her. In the closing laps of the race, Lance Andrews appears to be well on his way to his first victory in a major stock car series. However, in this sport we call racing, things change just like that. Andrews spins his car out coming into the S's, letting the victory slip away once again. He was never able to win a race in the TM Master Cup series, and it looks like that curse has made its way to Arla. This would hand the lead back to Namimura, who took full advantage. There goes Namimura behind the lapped car of Neji Hyuga. In a moment, you'll see Vinny Enzo coming in. There is Enzo in the 22. He is in second place. Namimura, with absolutely no competition whatsoever, would go on to take her first Arla Elite Series victory. This is actually the second victory for Rosebud Racing in this series. Their first came in their championship year with Kurt Walker in 2007. A lot of guys who needed good runs got them. Nami Mura, Scott Hamilton, Dallas Dupree, Benji Flynn, and Packer Carroll were all outside the top 30. I believe this is Vinienzo's best finish of the year. He finished in second. Taylor Brillen gets yet another top 10 finish. She has shown absolutely no signs of slowing down this season. If she keeps this up, she could very well become a contender for the title, despite uh, joining pretty late in the season. And your top 10 in the points. Hinata Huga takes the lead from Leslie Riggs and opens up a 43-point gap on her. Neji Huga and Kurt Walker are tied for third, both being 55 points back. Vinienzo in fifth, Andy Pearson in sixth. He's quickly established himself as a possible title contender after stepping back into his famous number two car. Siju Dejao continues to lead the Rookie of the Year standings, uh, Alex Carson in 9th, and Leigh Grell sneaks up into the top 10, he may have something for Dejao. 